Welcome back everyone to another video. I just want to say I appreciate you guys being here spending just a little bit of your time with me. Now, like the video said, I'm doing a top 10 favorite anime characters of all time. My top 10. Now, obviously it's going to go from 10 to 1. These are all in my opinion. And spoilers, there's no characters from One Piece on here. And there might be some characters from your favorite anime might not be on here because A, I might not have read it or watched it, or B, I just don't like them. I'm sorry. But this is my list. And it kind of sucks that I have to, like, explain that because I swear every time people do, like, ten, top 10 lists, you always have one person in the comments like, oh, uh, why isn't this character there? Well, there's a reason why. Anyways, off topic. So this is the top 10 list. We're going to go from 10 to 1. I'm going to explain some of them. I'm going to be vague. I'm going to explain why each one's a top 10, like in the top 10, obviously. But I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with it. Number 10. So years ago, my first anime that I watched coming back into anime was actually Black Clover. And I didn't mind it at first. I was like, all right, whatever. This is not bad. The animation of it was crisp. That's what I really liked about it. I was watching that and I was watching My Hero at the same time. Now, My Hero, mind you guys, My Hero is not on this list. Nobody from My Hero is on this list because I don't like My Hero that much. So, oh well. Anyways, so the 10th character, my 10th favorite character currently is none other than Captain Yami. Now, Captain Yami is dope. <laughs> like, he's straight up the definition of, like, him. Like, that dude. Every time I watch the show, yeah, like, Asta is the main character. So, Asta's going to have cool moments. But, like, the show does a, such a good job with Captain Yami where he is just a dog. And I love it. Every time he's on screen he's going to fight, you know things are about to get wild. And the last season when they had Captain Yami fight, dude, I was, like, holding my seat because I was just, like, whoa! Like the whole time I was watching, I just couldn't believe how awesome that fight scene was. Even before Asta showed up. Oh, I'm going to say this is probably going to be spoilers if you guys have never seen any of this. Just saying. Anyways, so though, I really did like Captain Yami. I actually like Captain Yami a lot, a lot because the way he is throughout the thing, he just doesn't really care, it seems like, which makes it like more fun to watch. And I also like. The jokes he does with Finral. Now, Finral is like a guy that can use like, por uh, like portal magic. And he'll like make jokes. He's like, can you guys hurry up? My ride's outside. And Finral's just chilling there. Stuff like that just cracks me up. I don't know why. I just really like Captain Yami. Because he's just like, he doesn't care. But he does. But like, the moment he's about to fight, you know things are going to get serious. And that's what I like the most about it. So, this character is actually number nine. And I actually watched the anime earlier this year. I seen bits and pieces of it when I was a kid. I just never really watched it all as a kid. But I decided to watch it as an adult. And man, this kid, for one, he's voiced by Vegeta. So there's that from Chris Sabat. So I immediately was like, oh my god, this is so funny. And so I was like, all right, we'll see how it is. But he ended up becoming just such a cool character. And I actually couldn't decide between him or another character in, in the show. And so I only picked one. Because I don't want to have multiples of certain shows. Just one character. Number 9 is Kuwabara. I actually really like Kuwabara. I think Kuwabara is such a cool character. And the way that he's written is. Yeah, Kuwabara is definitely like the weakest out of the four of them. But the way Kuwabara really handles himself in a lot of situations. Is he's like, this is what a man does. A man has to do these things. And it really just resonates with me a little bit. Because he's like. He understands, like, he's not the strongest character or the strongest guy when it comes to fighting sometimes. But, like, Kuwabara still steps up to the plate if he has to, to become a stronger character if he has to. Like, he doesn't try to back down. And I really enjoy that aspect so much with Kuwabara. And it just really hits deep with me. And I really do like Kuwabara. It's either Kuwabara or Kurama. At first, I didn't like Kurama. And then he just, I don't know what happened. He just all of a sudden grew on me. Maybe it was because... The Dark Tournament arc was just fire. But with Kuwabara, though, I like I just like the way he is with everyone. He's 
very kind and gentle towards everyone. He's kind of a simp, which is fine in some aspects. But I just, he's just a good character. Like I said, he, when he has to step up to the plate, he does. And that's what is so good about him. When the time comes and you have to be a man, Kuobara is going to be a man and he's just going to do it. And I really respect that a lot with Kuobara. It's just, Something so out of left field that I didn't really expect. And Kuobara doesn't disappoint. So this one really hits home for me. Because I read the whole manga series. And you got to meet him towards the end of the first arc. Before there's a huge time skip. And oh man. Just how he is, is such a good character. And it really did break my heart. <laughs> and that is Jiraiya. Now Jiraiya. Oh man. He hits home for me in so many spots. I really like the way how Dry is written. Just he, you know, he, you know, he's the pervy sage, just like a lot of other senseis. It's pretty normal. But Dry also has so many layers with him that just makes him better. And he really fits the sensei mode for Naruto. Naruto really needed someone like that. And when you get to be around Naruto and Dry a lot, it's just a father-son relationship, and it's just so good. And Dryer does stuff that you don't really think, oh, this isn't going to be good. But he does it, and you're like, wow, this is, like, really smart. And the way that Dryer ends things with Sonate, it's just a little bit of you just, like, mm, really just hits home for you. Now, anyone who has watched Naruto Shippuden definitely knows, like, the pain arc is peak. Like, that, that's the best arc in Naruto, personally. But, oh, man. That last part with Jiraiya, oh, it just really hit home. And I remember because I was reading, I was like, damn, oh, this made me sad. But Jiraiya, he's easily up there as one of my favorites. I don't know if he'll ever leave my top 10, but he's always in the top 10. Like, he'll move around probably, but he'll never probably leave it, just saying. So number seven on the list is a character that I watched when I was a kid. And I always had kind of a little crush. And then I rewatched the show uh, earlier this year. And I tell you what, my crush went from here to, like, this is, like, my favorite woman now in anime. Like, there's no one else is replacing her. Like, just saying. And that's Faye Valentine. Ooh, man. Now, if you talk about a simp, that's me. I, yeah. So, it's not just because Faye is, like, attractive. But I kind of like that aspect with her because the way she dresses and acts, that's how she's able to, like manipulate and get what she wants and it's just such a smart way how she does it it's really hard to like dislike that i think you get to learn a lot about her backstory and wow it's it's so sad that's why like i mean just in general cowboy bebop i think anyone everyone who has seen it like understands cowboy bebop but like just you learn about all these characters and her backstories and how they all just are like a family and you feel really bad towards the end of like how Faye's outcome is because you just sit back and you're like damn she has a family and then it's just like not there anymore and just it really just hits the heart and I think I just really like Faye I like how Faye is as a character she tries she's like a very independent girl and but she also understands there's times where you need other people to help lean a shoulder on and I really like the aspect with Faye and that's it's just Oh, it's so good. And there's obviously there's other reasons why I like Faye. So number six on the list is actually my one of my old anime that I like. And I rewatched it this year. And then I rewatched the newest version of it. The newer version of it wasn't that good. I'm actually gonna do like a giant ultimate review of it in February because I really like the show and I got it tattooed on my leg. So it's like I really like it. And that is Usagi from Sailor Moon. Now Usagi, I tell people, is like the definition of of like a strong female character. And she never ever talks about how she is strong. Or she's any of these things that we see a lot of. Usagi just is strong. And she doesn't like she accepts when she needs help. And Usagi is just she teaches you a lot about like what love really is. And I really like that about Sailor Moon in general. The show is focused a lot on just love and friendship. And obviously that's a pretty big vocal point with anime in general. But like Usagi really brings that out. Like she brings everyone around her. And Usagi just carries a team when it comes to fighting. Because she is obviously the main character. But 
she is just a strong character, strong-minded character when it comes to these outcomes. And I really enjoy this so much when I'm watching it that I just, I feel like you can do this, Usagi. You can do this. Like, I believe in her so much when I'm watching this show that it's like, undoubtedly, she's like, there. And the other thing is too, I don't think people understand, but Usagi is like, really strong. Just saying, she could like, beat Goku in a fight. Just saying. So, we are in the top five. Now, number five is, well, someone really interesting. Just saying. Now, number five, I haven't finished the manga yet. Because the manga, for one, isn't done yet. But I only finished the first three arcs. And after the second arc, I instantly was like, this dude is a top five favorite character of all time. Without a doubt. Like, he's easily number in the top five. And he is number five currently right now. Like he picked all, he was over all the rest of them. And I only started it just this year. Like this character already heads deep and I'm getting a tattoo of him on my leg. Cause I'm excited to do it. And that is guts. Guts from berserk is easily, he's number five on my list for favorite characters. Like this dude goes through so much. And I, like I said, I mean, like I'm not even finished with berserk. I'm not even caught up or anything, but the dude, Goes through so much crap where I'm at. And he still pushes through. That's what I like about Guts is like, he goes through so much hell in this story. But he keeps on going. He just keeps on going. And he doesn't stop. His mind is focused on like revenge of Griffith. Which is fair because I don't like Griffith because of this now. But like he doesn't stop. He just keeps going and it really pushes someone like, hey, you need to keep moving forward. You need to keep doing this. Grand Revenge is never the answer. But to Guts, it is. But you learn so much. He's just so human. And that's what I really like about Guts. All right. So number four is a character that really got me into anime. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have a lot of figures of him. Like, a lot. <laughs> He's used to be one of my, he used to be like the favorite of my anime, like characters, without a doubt. He was always number one. Then I got a little older. He's still in there, obviously. He's number four. That's Goku. You know, like, I doesn't need to explain too much. Like I said, I have literally Goku figures. I have like 12 of Goku figures. <laughs> I'm going to get a Goku tattoo on my back of my calf soon. I can't wait. But Goku is number four on my list. Originally, Goku was number one. But then I really sat back and thought about it. I'm like, is he really deserving as number one? The answer is no. Now, what does Goku represent to me? Goku always represented like hope, strength, willpower, friendship, love. He brought all these things to me. Same thing as like Usagi did. He is like the female version of Usagi to me. Except the love part, not really. But Goku really teaches you like, even with the, the worst enemy, you should never like seek revenge. You should never, you should, everyone deserves a second chance, essentially. Which, I really don't know how I feel about that. But at the same time, I'm like, damn you, Goku, you're right. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. I think a lot of people, especially like my age and a little older, that have watched Dragon Ball Z all understand Goku. And that's why a lot of people like Goku. But then you also have to like Vegeta because they're both just so great. Would I have Vegeta on this list? Absolutely. But I don't want to have multiple DBZ characters, multiple Cowboy Beep, because I would have Spike on this list, without a doubt. But like, I, I can't have more than one character from one show. That's just, that's my rule. So that's why I have Goku. For one, I like Goku more than Vegeta. I have always have. I think, I think Vegeta, hands down, has the best character development. One of the best character developments in all of anime, personally. And then I think Super kind of ruins him and Goku. <sighs> that's for future video. Goku is single-handedly one of my favorite anime characters of all time. It'll never change. I don't think the only way he'll get out of my top 10 is like there has to be six other characters or well, nine other characters that are just better than him. And it'll, I don't think that'll ever happen. So number three is an anime that really just resonated with me and I am going to get, a I don't know if you guys know, I'm getting tattoos of a lot of these characters, but man, he came out of nowhere. To make me really enjoy him as a character. And the thing is. He's just like kind of like how Goku is. How Usagi is. For main character stuff. It's very typical for main characters. That's why I'm not like. 
upset about my decision about it, but at the same time, I'm like, man, gotta love main, <laughs> the main characters, I guess. And that is Ichigo from Bleach. Now, I watched Bleach when I was a kid. Didn't remember too much of it, so I decided to rewatch it because Thousand Year Blood War art came out. Part 1 came out. Rewatched all of it. Remembered how much I really liked Bleach. And then I watched Part 1. Wow. <laughs> that was insane. But Ichigo himself is just a... I like Ichigo. A lot of people don't like Ichigo out of the big three for main characters. Because everyone picks friggin' Luffy, and I just... Luffy and Naruto, my opinion is like, yeah, their sole purpose is one, they each have one purpose each, and that is to be King of the Pirates or become Hokage. And Ichigo doesn't have that goal. And Ichigo's goal, honestly, really is just to protect his friends and family. I don't see why that's such a big deal. And to me, I'm like, I feel like that's more important than being King of the Pirates or becoming Hokage. Now, that's only surface level, like I said. And I'm not that deep with One Piece, but I'm not going to sit here and like defend myself of why I'm picking my opinion over this. And I don't honestly care if you guys disagree with it. I just, we all have opinions. But to me, that's kind of why I don't, like Naruto's not on this list, but I picked Jiraiya over Naruto. I like Naruto, I do. But like, when I sit back out of like the big three for the main characters, I resonate with Ichigo way more than I resonate with, you know, Luffy or Naruto. They all do really important things in their shows, obviously. But, like, Ichigo doesn't ever once will tell you, I'm going to become King of the Pirates, or I'm going to become the Soul King, or Hokage. He never once tells you this stuff, because he doesn't do it, because he, he just wants to save his friends and family. That's all he's trying to do. And I really respect that a lot. That's why I'm like, he does so many things for the people he loves. And I'm like, why does he get so much hate for this? There's nothing wrong with this. And that's just, I don't know. I, I resonate with that a lot. The other two do the same thing. But, oh, God forbid, they, they have one other goal. I feel like having a goal of just wanting to protect your friends and family is enough character motivation. All right. So the top two. Number two on the list. I almost said number one. So number two. Oh. The show is finally over, and I cried many times. I got a tattoo of this character before I even finished the last hour and a half episode of it, and that is Aaron friggin' Jaeger, man. Aaron Jaeger, oh man. So Attack on Titan got me into anime, like legit got me back into anime. I only watched like Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, and Bleach, and the older stuff, and I just never watched it. But then, out of nowhere, I decided to watch Attack on Titan. Season 1, it was on Netflix. Watched it, and I was mind-blown. And then, obviously, Season 2 came out, and I rewatched Season 1, and then I watched Season 2. And, oh, man, I couldn't stop, like, watching it. I, I literally went out and bought manga to read it, and I just, I kept falling in love with it, and, and then it hit hard, like, I sat back and like, who is my favorite character? And I always thought it was maybe... Actually, it was Sasha for a hot minute, because I really like Sasha. But Aaron definitely was my favorite character of the show. Like, the way how Aaron was going to do so many things just to save his friends and family. Like, it, mostly just his friends, because he didn't have family anymore. But anyways, everything he was doing, just wow. Like, you, he was willing to sacrifice everything just so his friends can live in a time of peace and that just really hit home for me all right guys sorry for the ending of my top 10 favorite anime characters my mic actually went out and it's still charging so we're gonna just raw dog it right now i'm just gonna kind of make this quicker towards the end just because it bothers me how bad i made this video well the ending of it is anyways so so we're going to do my number one favorite character, and that is Thorfinn from Vinland Saga. Now, Thorfinn, I was really hit or miss with him at first, beginning of Vinland Saga, because he just seemed like kind of like an edgelord, that he, all he wanted was revenge. And then you get to the next arc, and he just, he's a completely different man. He grows as a character, and the thing is... The biggest quote I swear that everyone was seeing and like was talking about for the show was, I have no enemies. 
that speaks volumes of Thorfinn's like life. Like it's so good. It, it is. It's the truth though. Like you, you really don't have enemies. Like, yeah, there is people that always want to have problems with you, but realistically, if you try not to have conflict or anything, you shouldn't have enemies. And that's what was just so powerful about that messaging. And just the way how Thorfinn was dealing with a lot of like deep stuff and just overcoming it with friends. It's, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. And I try telling people that all the time, like people need to watch Vinland Suck or read it. It's, it's a knockout. It's so good. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I do appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out all my socials down below. Make sure you guys check out my book. It's online. It's on, Ken it's on Amazon. It's free on Kindle. So you guys should just download it. Add me on Goodreads. I want to see what you guys are reading. And last but not least, make sure you guys stay safe, stay hungry, and tell someone you love them. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.